I'm going to do a video tonight on how to organize your inventory. Um, I was unable to go live on Facebook. I got an error in my app a few times and then thought I was spamming. So I'm in Facebook jail, apparently, from going live that didn't really go live. But that's okay. I'm going to share this video. Hopefully I'm able to share it. And we can get our friends over here. And I will also send out a text alert. So... It'll give me a few, um, give me a couple minutes if you guys can't be here, or like if you're here to watch, give me a couple minutes before I actually start, all right? So I need to find my live, my live stream. I need to get my link, copy my link, tell everybody that we're here. Um, how I organize my paparazzi inventory training video. I don't usually send out text alerts for um, trainings, but since it's not going to tell Facebook I'm here, then I'll tell you guys myself. So if you'd like to learn today, feel free to stick around and ask questions. Um, oh, I can see when you guys are saying hello. That's great. Um, okay, I just sent out the text alert. Let me go ahead and share it to Facebook if it'll let me. Um, I don't know if it's going to let me. It put me in Facebook jail because my I tried to go live three times in a row and it didn't work. The app was messing up. And now it thinks I'm a spammer. And so I'm in Facebook jail for a little bit. So let me try and see what happens if I share this. Not now. Posting. Okay, the, it let me do a post, just not go live. Okay, so that's good. So, all right. Hello. Hi, Monica. Hi, Maria. Hi, Sonic Plush. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Lisa, Rebecca. Hi, you guys. Um, so I'm going to teach about how I organize my inventory. This actually has been asked by quite a few people. Um, there are multiple ways to organize your inventory. But I really, really, really like my system, and I wanted to explain this to you so that you can decide if it will work for you. Um, I have a question. I need to know if I'm backwards to you or not. So on this little paper, can you guys read this, or is it backwards to you? I think for you guys it's forward, which would be good good because I'm going to be writing on paper. So is this forward to you? Whoops. If it is, then yay. It is. Oh, you guys, there is like no lag on YouTube. This is amazing. It's my favorite. Hello, all of you. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so we are going to talk about how to organize inventory. I was going to do this on Facebook and then upload it to YouTube, but now we can just keep it on YouTube. There are two methods or two necessities in types of organizing for paparazzi. There's actually three, honestly. The first one would be if you have a store, um, like an in-person store. I won't address that because organize your in organizing your inventory for like a retail store, it's a whole different ball game. So I'm not gonna talk about that, all right? But there's two regular types of organizing. <coughs> Excuse me. You can either have comments sold or not have comments sold. And I figure the majority of you do not have comments sold. So we're going to talk about that type of organizing first because it's a little more realistic and applicable to most of you guys. So I mean, actually, we're going to get up in a little bit and do a little field trip. But wow, we started cleaning my office and didn't finish. <laughs> That's what that is behind me. Maybe I can get this background, make it a little nicer. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay. And if you comment, I should be able to see your comments. Okay. All right, sweet. So if you have questions, you can ask them because the chat does work. If anybody's watching and you wish you could chat, you have to log in to YouTube. And if you don't have a YouTube account or a Gmail account, you can create one for free because it's really nice to be able to chat and ask questions. So please do that if you have a question. I'm going to be on here for a little while and that way I can answer you. So I'm glad you're all here. Hi. Hi, everybody. All right. So two types of organizing. So this first version I'm going to teach you applies to most of you. Okay, most of you. 
I want to tell you a quick reason. I do. I see Areda Figueroa. I do see you. Um, and I see Melissa. Yep. I see a Lou, Stephanie. I see a lot of you guys. Um, so with paparazzi, you are selling a product. And so you have to carry your inventory. So when you have a business with paparazzi, you have to buy your stuff first, then you sell it. Okay. You're going to buy it and then sell it. So knowing that you're going to buy it and then sell it means you have to store it. And that can present a problem if you don't have a plan. And what most people do is they do what I did. You, you get your first box of jewelry and you're excited and you have a party and da, da, da. And before you know it, you're overwhelmed with stuff around you. So once your business starts getting a little more complex and you're starting to actually sell stuff, you need to have a plan in place or else you're gonna waste a lot of time. The main purpose of organizing is to save time. I have done this where I go look for a ring for an hour and I don't want to get paid $2 for an hour of my time. And that would be the profit I would make on the ring. So it's really important to stay organized so your time is efficient. Instead, you wanna be able to find, you know, 20, oh, honestly, lot, 150 things within an hour's time so that your time is worth much more than looking for a ring for a whole hour. So that's the purpose of this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to teach you guys how I built my business and how I organized um, after I started selling online. So for five years, I'll give you a quick history. For five years, I sold in person. I used to live in Virginia and I sold in person doing like fairs and stuff. Hi, Mary. And when I did fairs, I, um, I literally like carried my inventory from place to place. And because that was the only way, and I did parties too, but because that was the only way I sold, I would have pegboards that I could display at the house or at the events. And I would just carry them from place to place and refill the boards. So in old school paparazzi, where you only sell in person, you can keep everything like intact in your displays, store them in your room or garage, and then pull them out when you go to your next party and all you have to do is fill in the blank spots where things sell out just like a normal store would do. That is not the case anymore. Um, after that first five years, we started selling online and it's been phenomenal. Selling online is an amazing way to reach hundreds and hundreds of people and you can actually have impressions on hundreds of people at once. So, for example, if I was going to sell these earrings that I'm wearing, I could potentially sell 10 pair by just talking about them one time. And that's a little different story from selling in person. In person, we would just have like one of everything. And when it's gone, it's gone. But nowadays, when we do selling online, we've got these masses of inventory because we have multiples. So when I go buy these earrings for the first time, I buy 10 of them. I don't just buy one because it'll take the same amount of time for me to talk about it and sell it once or talk about it and sell it to 10 people or 20 people or 30 people, honestly. There's some that we sell 50 at once. And so that is the way to truly build your paparazzi business is to have multiples of your inventory as you need it, as you grow, okay? So hopefully that makes sense so far. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, if anybody's here and just wants to shop and doesn't care about organizing, I have a website, hotsytotsy.com, hotsy-totsy.com, and you can just like go buy all the stuff I'm going to talk about. <laughs> so if you don't care about organizing and you just want to shop, feel free to just go do that. Um, anyway, back to the inventory. Hi, Deborah. So I'm going to tell you how when, when I started selling online, I was selling one at a time. My very first live video, I showed 20 pieces, 20 different pieces, and I sold it to like two people. They each bought like one thing. It was very minimal, and that's how most people start. That's how everybody starts. And then the next video, there were maybe three people there, and I showed 20 things, and it just was very little. But as you grow, and as somebody says, hey, I want those earrings, and then somebody else says, hey, I want those earrings, now you have people fighting over stuff. So it is your job as a paparazzi consultant to buy more than one 
of some things that you think a lot of people will like. And it's, it really is just a guess. I just have to guess what people will really like. That's part of the fun and excitement. And then I buy a lot of jewelry in doing that. So then what happens is I need a plan to be able to sell it if it doesn't sell out on my video or if it doesn't sell out on my albums or wherever. So there's a whole organizing and rotation system that I eventually turned into using that helped me stay organized phys both physically if with the jewelry in boxes and mentally, it helped me organize my business and have a day-to-day -day plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. I don't see any comments, which is fine. If you do have questions, just tell me. Happy to answer them. And the comments, like, they, like, disappear until somebody talks. And so that's why I keep double-checking. But I think we're good. So let's talk about the beginner. So when you're very first in paparazzi, if you're, if you're going to sell online exclusively, then my system will work for you perfectly. But there are ways to work in selling in person with my system, okay? And I'll tell you this now, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you this now so that I don't forget later and I'll repeat it again later. But in this system, there is a portion of your storage and of your inventory storage where you have like a limbo jewelry, like jewelry in limbo, jewelry that isn't put away, but it's also stuff that's not for sale anymore. And you have this limbo jewelry. That limbo jewelry is what you take to parties, okay? I'm talking with my hands and you can't even see me. <laughs> but the limbo jewelry is what you take to the parties. So when I talk about that section of jewelry that nobody needs here and nobody needs here in the inventory storage, this is what you take to your fair that you sign up for and your home party that you sign up for. And it's not that it's good or bad jewelry, it's just part of your system, your rotation system. So it's gonna change all the time. And that's fine because selling in person, you might you might encounter some of the same people, especially if you have a group of friends going from party to party to party. And so you should be switching your inventory in this little storage rotation system. All right, so um, here's, all the stuff I'm teaching you is what I think. It doesn't mean it's the only way, okay? The first thing I believe is that you do not need to have a pegboard. And some of you guys are gonna be like, what? But I believe you don't have to have a pegboard. Pegboard is really good and really helpful if you have a store, if people shop at your house, or if you do home parties or fairs. So if you do home parties and fairs, it's fine, you can have a pegboard but you can run your entire business without one. And I had to, when we lived in Virginia and I started online, I did online for about a year and a half before we moved where we are now. Um, I would, I had to do my whole business on the end of my dining room kitchen nook. Like it was a tiny space. It was like as big as my desk. Okay. So I was running my business at the end of my kitchen table with about two more feet behind me and a little table behind me. So I ran my whole business there. Then I moved it into the end of my living room that was probably about <clears throat> maybe 15 feet by 10 feet space. So about the size of, half the size of a bedroom, um, about half the size of a bedroom. And so it was one long table and a storage thing, which I'm gonna show you. And I still use it. And I was able to run my whole business that way. And then when we moved here, my system was the same. It's just that I had a whole bunch more limbo jewelry and I got clear up to black diamond selling. Black diamond selling is 700 pieces, 750 pieces per week, selling 750 pieces per week of jewelry. So that means I could do the big guns. I could go all the way and do a big achievements and stuff with this system. Okay. So this system is something you can grow with. Okay. Um, this system does not, does not include having an online store. So I'm going to teach the other way if you have an online store. It doesn't have to be comment sold. But if you have any online store, I'm going to teach a completely different inventory system. Okay. Okay. So, so far so good. I'm curious if anybody on Facebook can even see me, but it doesn't matter. You guys are here, so that's all we need. Um, and then... And I just want to make sure there's no questions. Okay. 
So lately I've been getting a tickle in my throat. Oh, hold on. Okay, let's talk about, I kind of want to make a little visual poster of this while I tell you what, what this stuff is. So we'll just do it right on here. Okay, this is going to blow your mind. Are you ready? With this system, with the system I grew grew into up until a, only a year ago, so I did this for eight and a half years, almost nine years. <coughs> Excuse me. This system does not track inventory, okay? So I'm actually going to call this the do not track inventory system, and I'll explain why. Do not track inventory. Oh, I already messed up. Let me flip it over. Do not track inventory. So if you guys don't know me already, I believe in doing things the easiest way humanly possible. Why would you do extra work for no reason? I like to do things that take less effort and less work. That's called working smarter, not harder. It is not necessary to so-and-so. I'm going to give you some examples later. Um, but one of them, it's not necessary to track your inventory, okay? So what I mean by that is you don't need to get a Google spreadsheet, type in the names of all your jewelry. You don't have to say how many red things you have, how many purple things you have, how many earrings you have. In that... You don't even need to invoice that way either. When you invoice your customers, you can just say one piece of jewelry, five pieces of jewelry. And again, that might blow your mind. I was talking to somebody, one of my friends, I was helping her save time. We kind of like cracked down on how she uses her time. And she said it takes her like three hours to invoice 30 people. And I'm like, why does it? And she told me that she was itemizing her invoices and I'm like no don't even do that it's your customer's job to remember what they bought and then they just pay you it's your um it, it's your service that you're allowing them to pay at the end of the week you don't have to keep a service of track keeping track of what they're buying so you do not have to track inventory in my system which is amazing because then you don't you don't risk the um you don't take the risk of like losing a ring and then never finding it again or accidentally sending something to the wrong person and then never having it for the next guy. Like er it's error free. Okay. Sometimes, you know, you might send something to the wrong person and then you're like, oh, you can have it. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And then you can just let it go. It's very, very freeing to not have this extra problem. So the new do not track your inventory system is based on color and style um, storage, okay? So I'm gonna write this on here. So first you, first you do it by color, and then you divide by style. So I'm gonna put necklace, earring, uh, bracelet, and ring. And I'm gonna show you exactly exactly what I used for for four years or however long that was, okay? So first you're gonna divide by color, then you're gonna divide by these. And some of you guys do this already, but you need, <coughs> excuse me, you need your system to grow. You don't want to have to revamp your system. And, the, and both of these systems are amazing because you can grow with them. And that's a big deal. Nobody wants to do extra work. Nobody wants to revamp their system. Who has time for that? If you enjoy that, that's one thing, but to have to do that is another. You don't want to be forced into doing more work than necessary. Okay, I have to have a cough drop, then I'll quit coughing. All right, so, okay, let me just get my train of thought back, make sure everybody's here. Hi, Kelly. All right, so I'm going to show you these storage things that I have. Let me flip my camera. I have some back here, but I am going to show you the real ones. So I have talked about these before. You can buy these on Amazon. Hi. <laughs> you can buy these on Amazon, and they are called Langria 20 Storage. Langria is a brand, and Amazon can track no-name brands if you type that in, and so it'll give you a lot of search results. 
but look up and I actually think it says Langria on it. See that Langria? It's kind of hard to see, but so look up Langria storage. I buy the ones where there's 20. So right now I have 16 set up, but if there were five um, columns instead, it, that would be the full set. So Langria storage 20. These things are amazing because they're cheap, but they are pretty darn durable. I've had a couple, like these, <laughs> these sides over here popped off and I haven't fixed them yet, but they're still holding up. I mean, they're not bad, okay? And I like to do things for almost as free as possible because you want to make money on the jewelry. You don't want to invest in a ton of supplies. I kind of can't stand it when somebody goes and buys, you know, $2,000 worth of storage supplies. It doesn't make any sense because it's not a good business move. So let me show you what's so cool about this. In here, you can fit our 12 by 12 boxes. So if you're already a paparazzi person, or you can have a paparazzi person collect these for you for when you start. Many, many, many of our boxes are 12 by 12, okay? These are, I think they're 14 by 14, I think. So 12 by 12 boxes fit in here phenomenally. And I'm going to show you here. Ooh, that one's going to fall. This one is cut down. I cut the flaps off, okay? The cut down version is actually the one I would recommend. So let's take that out so I can teach you more. Okay. In fact, let me move this out of the way. Okay. So if you're going to store your jewelry by color and then type, here's how you would do it. You would have, this is how I did anyway. I would have a cubby for every color. So I already have this happening. I have, um, I think that's brown because I can't reach it. <laughs> There's not, I don't sell brown as often. Brown, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. You know what? Let me tell these a little slower. You might want to write them down. Brown, pink. Then we have the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Um, black, white. Silver, gold, urban, you can't see it because it's covered, <laughs> copper, brass, and multicolor. So there's exactly 16 to do this. Um, often what I'll do is I will combine the multicolor and urban together and I'll put starlit shimmer in one. So do what you need to to make it fit right. If you end up getting 20 cubbies, you could use one for your shipping supplies and maybe one for your, I mean, you don't need that much stories. Maybe one for your bubble wrap and I don't know, okay? Then what you wanna do is subdivide. So we have this orange box. I'm just gonna sit down so it's easier. You have this orange box. And so you can actually make multiple boxes. So what I did is we had two. We had a necklace box and a non-necklace box. And we had different colors of post-it notes. So if I had to find an orange necklace, I knew it was the orange, or sorry, the yellow post-it note box where the necklaces were. So this isn't divided anymore because I have a new system, but I can kind of show you. So you would, you would potentially put all your necklaces in here and then all your non-necklaces in the other box. And it makes it much easier to dig through because you have less stuff to dig through, okay? So far, so good. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to explain to you at what point you can use this system. But this is how you subdivide by color, okay? Oh, another cool tool is these shoe boxes. You can buy these like at Walmart or Dollar Tree. They are also just the right size. See, they fit. And so sometimes we had our non-necklaces in here. When we got more inventory, we used a larger box. Also, something kind of cool is these are longer boxes. These are 18 inches by 12. And these are what I would store my albums in. And I can talk to you about that in a little bit. But we would put, this fits right in the top of this. 
It kind of hangs in the top like this, watch. Like that, isn't that cool? So then we would use this, so if we had a big box with albums, we would um, we would put the bracelets, how do we do it? I think we put the bracelets and rings in one and then the earrings in another and the necklaces in the bottom for an album. So there's really efficient, almost free ways to organize your jewelry. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about more stuff. There are certain times when you will use this system as you grow. So I'm gonna tell you guys how, how I used it. So when you're first new, when you're first new, I guess we'll call them levels, okay? So level one is a new person. You can just use the cubbies. You can straight up use your cubbies, no problem. So you can store all your jewelry in your cubbies because you're not gonna have that much stuff, right? Until you start growing and realizing you need multiples and so on. So you can use cubbies. You could even have a pegboard because you might end up doing some parties. So it's not going to be very hard to find your stuff when you're brand new. Now, when, let me think of if, if there's only two levels or three, because we did it a couple of ways. Um, there's three levels. Okay, so the new is just basic. You can just store in the stores, storage colors, okay? When you start establishing a system, you want to have... You want to be able to locate your jewelry fast, and so I'm going to tell you how, how I used to do it. And, and then the third way is, is when you have uh, a ton of jewelry. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see the difference. Um, this is when we used... Uh, okay. Your limbo... Okay. I'm, I've got a way to explain this. This is exactly how I did it. I just want to make sure... I explain this so it's clear. Okay, so your cubbies will have different purposes as you move along. So I will explain this, okay? So when you're first new, you can use your cubbies as storage for colors and you're great. You may never outgrow it, but if you have big plans and you push yourself and you order more and you go live more and you meet more people and you grow, you will have to switch that up. So level two, would be someone who is establishing a well thought out system and selling kind of like clockwork, okay? So here is what I would suggest. There's a jewelry rotation system and, oh, you know what though? No, I'll show you during this level two explanation. So <clears throat> there's a jewelry rotation system I recommend doing and I did it again for a long, long time, like three and a half years and it, it is pretty fail proof. It's, it's very, it works. Okay. So I'm going to explain that to you. And in the details, I'll show you how to actually store your jewelry. Now, remember when you're doing any of this inventory, any inventory storage, you're not going to track your inventory. So this is all physically handling your inventory. So the only time I care about my inventory is at the end of the year. I can just count everything which is, it's a little bit of a hassle, but it's, I mean, it's just what it is. But when somebody if okay, so if somebody says, do you have this orange bracelet? I can go to the cubby and say, yes, I have the orange bracelet because I can literally physically go look for it, okay? And then, and that's for a new person. That one's going to be easy. For level two, which is the big one, this is the one I did for a very long time. And this is the one most of you guys will use. Um, if somebody says, hey, do you have this orange bracelet? You can check your cubbies, but that's about it. Because, and I don't, I don't believe this is really a problem, but this is just a reality with this type of storage, is if you cannot easily find your product for your customer, then you just tell them that you don't have it. And for some of you, that might sound really crazy talk, right? But this business is based on the fear of missing out and scarcity, and it is okay. Your customers are familiar with that because you might get it as a hostess reward tomorrow, and then you'll have it, and they'll get to see it presented later. So it doesn't mean 
there are a few exceptions where I would maybe go find stuff for people um, from another consultant and order it from them, but like very few, maybe like for my best friend or something. But in most cases, as for business sense and for time saving, you just look in your basic storage, which is your colors, and you see if you have it, and if you don't, you let it go. So I'm gonna explain why, because you're gonna have jewelry in other places. When I was selling, I would do this as my system, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna number this. This system is actually, let's see, let me draw this out. This system actually works for everything but a new person. A new person is just gonna like try to go live because they're so new. But you'll, you'll work into this system and maybe to this if you get really big. So I'm gonna list what I would do. So when you, the very first thing you do is you get new jewelry, right? You're gonna order jewelry today, for example. So when you order jewelry, you should turn that into a pre claim album and I am going to run out of room. Okay. When you order jewelry, you should turn it into a pre-claim. What that means is you have people who found you and they love you and they love the jewelry. They want first dibs. Give them special treatment and let them pre-claim it. You don't have to physically do anything with your inventory because it's still at the paparazzi warehouse. Okay. So it's just an imaginary thing to sell until you actually get it in your house, okay? That's when you place your order. So then when you receive your package, I will just put package so that you know it's a physical package. You're gonna do two things. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna divvy out, physically divvy out your pre-claims, okay? So I'll just put divvy. <laughs> divvy your pre-claims. Okay, so these guys here ordered it. So once you get your package physically, you're going to get your pre-claims and you're going to put them in people's actual envelopes or cubbies or whatever you used. I used an envelope system. That, that would be a different video, but you put them in their special place to save until they pay you. Okay, we'll call it cubbies, though, because that's what most people reference. So that's the first thing you do when you get your package. The other place it's going to go when you get your package is your live show box that you're going to prepare for your live show. Okay, so you're going to divvy out and then give them for your live show. You have to divvy them out first so that you do not accidentally sell someone's jewelry that they want. So if I bought 10 of these earrings and three people wanted them, I'm going to physically get three of them from my new package, put them in their envelopes, and then I'm going to have seven together. It is a cough drop, so I'd rather do that than cough. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so now I've lost my train of thought. So here's how you prepare your live show. Um, I actually have a new order right here. And this, to me, this is really simplistic and you wanna make sure that you do not double do anything that you don't have to double do because then you're wasting time. So, Here's a new order I got. And when you get a new order, you wanna make sure everything's there. And then you're gonna physically have these stacks of jewelry. Um, on, I'll talk about single items. Can be handled differently when you're a bigger seller. But for this case, we'll just say everything new goes in your new live box. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your stack of necklaces. These are all the same necklace. Okay. I'm going to get a page cover or a baggie. I like to use Ziploc baggies because they're so cheap. I have one right here. I want to like show you because having props makes it a little easier to remember. Okay. So I have a baggie or a page cover depending on how many darn things I have. And I could even get a, uh, a large Ziploc and not a page cover. Page covers worked well because they kind of stand up and they worked well for me when I used to not have an online store with the system I'm teaching now, but either one works. You're gonna get your jewelry and you're gonna put them all in your storage, except for one. 
and you're going to get your one item and you're going to actually open it. This mimics the pegboard, the need for a pegboard. A pegboard has your jewelry open and ready to go. So we're going to simulate that by doing it with space, saving space. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to get my bag. I'm going to put the bag in here with all the other ones and my necklace. I'm going to just drop it in straight. Whoops, <laughs> that's not supposed to catch. Let me try again. I'm going to drop it in straight so that I can pull it out without a huge problem. So now this is ready for a live show. That's how I get it ready. Let me do another example with something small. Um, these earrings. I have three of these earrings. I'm going to put all of them in the bag but one, and then I'm going to open this bag. And then I put these in here. The reason for this is you will save time. You're prepping your jewelry for a live show so you can show it fairly quickly. If I have something that's a set or that I think looks good together, what I'll often do is put it inside here like this. Because when I grab this to go live, I'll see that there's two items in there. And when I'm finished showing, I will separate them and put them in my done box. Okay, so if you do have things that match or look good together, you can kind of put them together or um, uh, clip them with a, um, a binder clip. Or even you can, like let's say you had earrings and rings that matched, you could put those together in a page cover. So having the larger bags or page covers helps with your organizing in more than just this way. So this is ready for live. This is ready for live. And then one more example is if I had, I need to put this back in the bag because these actually probably belong to people and I don't want to misplace them. If I have a single, a single item, I don't know if I have one over here. Let's say this is my only ring that looks like this. I'm still gonna open it. This is why you need to get a lot of baggies. I'm still gonna open it, take it off of the stuff put it in a baggie and have it separate just like this. Because what that does for me is when I go live, hi Terry, when I go live, I can just put my hand in here and grab this ring and show it. It's uneventful, it's very quick. And that preparation for live is pretty cool. There are more reasons to have your stuff open and I'll explain that in a second. Um, I saw your question, do they give you just a box of jewelry or do you have to pick what you wanna sell? We get to order what we want, Deanna. So um, once you buy your kit, your kit is a surprise box. But after that, you can order as little as one piece or as many as 50 of the same piece. And then you can get, like my friend spent $1,800 today because so much good stuff came out. So um, yeah, we get to pick our jewelry. I know, right? That's a really cute ring, Deborah. Okay, so do you guys get it? We have our bags and our page covers or large gallon bags. And we are gonna throw everything into one box. And so typically what I would do is, again, I don't use this system anymore, but I used it for three and a half years. I would get an old paparazzi box and I tape the corners up and I put tape right here on all four sides and I end up with this tall box. And that is where I would throw in all of my jewelry ready to go for live okay and then i put a note on here that says prepped for live or li we just put live and this box was always sitting in the corner of the room so when you have anybody working with you or even for yourself so that you kind of know what's going on you can always um you can always be like okay do i have enough jewelry for my live video does that make sense so far they have kits that are 99, well, let's just say 100, 300, and 500 dollars. And if you, I have a series of videos here on this channel called Get Paparazzi Certified that explains a lot of it. And then if you want a phone call with me, let me know because I love to answer questions. I don't beg people to sign up. I like you to be informed and then you can decide if it's gonna be good for you. Oh, there's Lynn, okay. <laughs> I didn't even consider your name being Lindsay, that's cool. Okay, so when you're getting your new box ready, you also want to grab old jewelry from your limbo place. 
So let me show you on the little picture so it makes sense. I'm gonna put plus limbo. <laughs> Because the whole secret to any business is you need to rotate your stock so that you can sell as much as possible. So I'm going to put live show plus limbo. So when you grab, let's say I look at this box and there's, you know, 10 things in there. I'm like, uh oh, I need, you know, 20 or 30 for my live. Then I can go to my colored cubbies and grab some of that storage jewelry. Okay. Remember, we're talking about, so for a new person, you're just going to use the colored cubbies. For the second level, which is a pretty, uh, like a medium seller, this is, we'll talk about cubbies in a minute. We're going to go in this order. So you order your stuff and you post things that are coming and you sell them or you have people claim them. You don't actually have them pay yet. Second, you open your new package. You divvy out your pre-claims. And then you prepare your live show box and include limbo jewelry. And something that's kind of nice is you can go by color. So if I had um, if I had this light pink ring that I was going to show, <laughs> I never know where the camera is. I never go live sideways. Um, I can find other jewelry that is this cloudy pink color and match it so that I can present it as cute ideas and then I can present multiple pieces of jewelry available. It doesn't mean I have to sell it all as a set and limit people from buying. It's just that when you showcase jewelry to match other stuff, it's a lot more appealing. Okay. So if any of you guys sell paparazzi, you should be showing sets, not necessarily selling sets, but showing sets. And that's how you implement them is you pull them from your storage and put them in your live box with your new stuff, okay? Oh, good, Terry, I'm glad you like those videos. Okay, so after you do your live show, the next thing I recommend that you do, and this is where your jewelry is physically gonna move, is that you need to do either an album or a speed sale. And I can teach you more about these if you don't know what they are, but they're they're different from live video. They are quick. Some people don't want to do live video. Um, so let me think for a second. Oh, this is okay. I have an idea. I'm just trying to make this visual for you guys to to remember and understand. So when you do your live show and limbo box, you then go live, right? And you try to sell stuff. As you sell stuff while you're live, you're going to physically put it in their cubby. So, you know, if Lynn says that she wants to buy a pair of these earrings while I'm live, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lynn. And then I physically grab a package. Let's pretend it was this necklace. I just, I grab one of the wrapped ones and I put it in her bag and it's done. It's physically no longer here and no longer available because it's in Lynn's cubby. Potentially, you know, maybe I sell them all. When I get to the last one, I would package it up and put it in her cubby also. I've already lost, oh, there's my packaging. So I would package it back up and, and then I'd be like, hey, I'm sold out, and then we're done. If they don't all sell though, leave your open one in here for various reasons, which I'll explain. So you're gonna physically put the stuff in people's bags or cubbies. Then you're going to do an album or speed sale. So it's going to be rotated. So as you are live, you need to have a done box. Okay. So you've got a box labeled live, just like this, a box labeled live. And then you need another one called done or shown or something where you can physically put, you know, if I'm done showing this necklace, I get it and I put it in the other box. It's no longer in my live box and it's moved to my done box. After the done box or what happens to that done box is an album or a speed sale. So with an album and a speed sale, um, you can quickly sell stuff in a different fashion because live video is not everybody's cup of tea. It's starting to rain. I just love the way it sounds. I don't know if you guys can hear it. So what I would do is an album. So I'll explain that first and then I'll explain the speed sale. So 
Because this piece of jewelry is already open and I want to sell it through a photograph, I'm going to take my own pictures. And I did a video on how to take pictures on my Facebook business page if you guys want to learn. It's kind of fun to learn that. But it's already, it's literally already open. Oh, it's a little bit tangled. But I would um, lay this out and take a picture of it. And at the same time, I actually make a little piece of paper that says the color and how many there are. So if I would literally just count them, one, two, three, four. So I would put four available, black, and take a picture. Okay, and I again, I explained that on my other video. If you need the link, send me a message, but it's on my business page for Facebook from about 10 days ago. And I will put it here on YouTube soon. So then I just take a million pictures. So if I have this box of all this jewelry I showed, whether it's old stuff or new stuff, it doesn't matter. If I just showed it on video, now I can take a picture of it and post an album. Now something magical can happen with those albums. I want my live people to come look at my album. So I will pull more old stuff from my storage and mix it among the jewelry in the photos. Something else I like to do is get my singles. So I told you I would address that later. If you don't have time to show one piece at a time on your live video, an album is a really good place to present that single piece of jewelry. And you can take a picture of it along with everything else. And then you end up with this big list of photos that you can post and sell your jewelry from. And I believe it's important to say how many you have so people don't waste their time claiming if you don't have enough. So they need to know if there's only one left or two left and so on. Okay, so that's what an album is. A speed sale is the same thing, but it's video. And so what you can do is you can get all of your jewelry that's open. And my friend told me a super cool idea today. I'll explain it. And you would hang this up on a hook on a pegboard or you can lay it on a table. I've seen it done both ways. And then you need to assign it a number. So let's say we have People really do a lot, like 150 pieces, but let's say we have five pieces here. I would name this number one, and then I have a number two, three, four, five, and then I get my video camera close up, and I would present each piece of jewelry just on video with numbers. So it is kind of like an album, but that way you can talk, and your face is usually not on the video. You're just presenting with the camera looking at jewelry very quickly. Now, a problem, a reason I've never done, I have done them sometimes, but not often done videos with <clears throat> a speed show is I had a problem, you know, where on earth is this package? You know, what if I can't tell what it goes to? Oh, good. <laughs> That's good, Maria. Um, oh, you're welcome, Shelly. I know that. <laughs> Deborah, I'm going to, that um, ring is in my VIP group. And you can send me a PM. I can check for you if you can't find it. So, because she's a customer already and a team member. Okay. Anyway, so with this speed show, how do you put things back? That that has always been a really big problem for me. So here's what my friend taught me. Um, this is Julie Sanford. She has a YouTube channel also. So if you want to look her up, she's got different ideas and they're also very good ideas. But you would put the number you assign to this, you would put in here too. So if I'm going to assign this number one, I would put a post-it with number one in here. And she actually has permanent duplicate numbers, hi Francis, that she has made so that they just, she automatically has those two numbers and then she'll put one on her necklace and one in the bag. That way she can put it back together and put it away instantly, right? And again, after you take the pictures and after you do your speed sale, don't wrap it up until you sell it. Guess why? When you rotate this, you're going to show it again on your live video one day, or you're going to take a picture of it again one day. So don't wrap that piece of jewelry until you sell it, okay? All right. I think we're good so far. If you have questions, tell me. When you post an album or a speed sale, you typically leave it up for a few days or maybe a week, but I highly recommend you take it down after because remember what I said earlier your business is based on scarcity and the fear of missing out and if you leave up your albums forever people do not appreciate how cute it is they want it to feel new and fresh 
So if you delete the album and post a new album with different stuff, and that same ring or necklace comes back in two months, half the people aren't even going to remember. Most people don't even remember seeing it. You want it to feel fresh and new. And maybe you present it with a different set in the future. Um, one other tip. I have attempted to take pictures of sets. So I talked about doing sets on your live video. Doing sets in photographs, not as appealing for some reason. Um, you could try to do it, but it's a little bit more difficult. Now, if you're not using software, which is the stage we're talking about, if you're just selling like a normal person, then it's not a big deal to show a set because it is attractive. And then just make sure people understand that they can buy the necklace separate from the ring, separate from the earrings. Um, the only bad thing is that those pieces of jewelry will not really be um, focused in. Like, like they'll be far away. If you have to put a whole set on a photo, then people can't really see the detail. And that's what the pictures are so cool for, is you can see all that detail. Okay. Um, all right. After your album and your speed sale, you're going to put it in limbo. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to write cubbies right there just so that you. Oh, and let me say one more thing about the speed sale and the album. When you make a speed sale and album, it's going to go in a box just like the live box. And so you're going to get a box. That's, and you're going to label it with the date you posted it. So if I posted this April 15th, 2021, that I would post it there. And I would write April 15th, 2021 album or April 15th, 2021 speed show. Sometimes I would do a morning and afternoon album. So I would say that morning album, afternoon album. And each album's jewelry or, or a speed show's jewelry is intact within that box. Then when somebody claims it, all you have to do is look at the date. And it's ridiculous, easy to find. It's wonderful. Um, in fact, what I would recommend is that if you have a, a regular system where, you know, every Tuesday you're posting an album, don't package or gather anything until right before you invoice because it'll save you time. If you go jump out of bed and go grab a piece of jewelry somebody claimed, you're wasting all your time. So have working hours and you know, on Thursday mornings or whatever, when you invoice, that's when you gather their jewelry physically, put it in their bags physically um, from the album and live show, because then you can just work intensely and be done. Okay. You can get in the train of thought, work, 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 and then be done. Okay. Hi, Susan. Yeah, I know. Right. I love rainstorms and stuff. Okay. I'm kind of running out of time. I'm going to I want to make sure I cover this clearly. This, this is the main one, and then I'll tell you the alterations. So remember that the limbo in this situation, when you start selling a decent amount and you're not new anymore, I would recommend this. This is the system I followed forever. The limbo is where you're grabbing stuff. So you're going to grab from your live sh from your limbo and add it to your, your live show. And then this needs to say plus limbo. Your speed sale... And your um, album is going to include limbo jewelry too. And you just kind of randomly grab stuff. You know, I've noticed here's something that might bother you guys, but, but I can tell you it's fine. Let's say you get a purple ring and your hostess rewards. And you're like, oh, I have those already. No, no, don't even bother. It's okay. It's okay if your chunks of jewelry don't stay together. It's totally fine. So let's say you get a uh, hostess reward purple ring. I can't talk to you right now. Um, but I'll be done soon. No, I can't talk to you right now. So you can get your hostess rewards, like your purple ring. And I would typically mix those into my albums. So I'm actually going to write that in here. Um, plus H R. That's a really good place to mix in your new stuff, which can include hostess rewards. Okay. So this can all go in your album and your speed sale. And then it all goes in that same box. And then people hopefully buy from it. And then when you close your album, when it's no longer posted and you've gathered all the jewelry and you're done, then you sort it by color into your cubbies. And that becomes your long-term storage is your cubbies. Okay. So 
this step right here where you have to go from your album to your cubby to your cubbies is the true limbo that's where you can get your jewelry that you haven't put away so let's say i have this album that is closed and it's all mixed up stuff and i have to put it away by color so that takes a little bit of time if I have this random slew of jewelry, that is a perfect thing to have at a show or a home party because then I don't have to take that extra time to put it away. I can try to sell as much as I can to, to whoever, you know, a party and their friends. And then if it's still left, then I go put it in the cubbies. Does that make sense? Okay, um, you can look for it on Amazon. Look up Langria 20 Storage, and that's where you can get the cubbies. Okay, so let me tell you the difference between these two right here. Limbo, and or sorry, level two and level three. This is when I started selling at black diamond level. Level, <laughs> you can't talk. This was diamond level, so you can get pretty high up with this system. It is a very tried and true system. This album thing, there's just one little tweak you might enjoy, and I really liked it. I got to a point where my albums were about 150 different pieces, and so digging through the box got more and more complicated. And so we started actually having, um, instead of, I don't know how to say it, our albums were in the cubbies instead, by color. And then I would have a week one and a week two. That's kind of complicated. I'm not even gonna explain that. If any of you get up to Black Diamond Selling and want to know this system, please tell me and I'll explain it to you. But there is a little bit easier way to do it if your albums become difficult to dig through and find the jewelry for your customers. But typically, if you're posting 100 or less per album, you should be, you should be okay. Um, and I would, I would almost always put 100 in each album. So, that is my main point I wanted to make on how to do your inventory without tracking it, okay? You're gonna physically handle your jewelry. You're gonna physically look at your yellow long-term storage and say, oh my gosh, I need more yellow stuff. I mean, it's really so random when we order anyway. You know, once you start selling a lot, you don't need to worry too much about colors because we get so much new jewelry every single day. Um, you really don't have to do anything but physically rotate your jewelry in this system and then you'll be able to know where stuff is. So again, when somebody says, I need an orange, I need this particular orange bracelet, you can go look in your cubbies. You might remember showing it on live or an album, but if not, it's probably sitting in limbo ready to be put away and you can just tell them you don't have it right now. Hostess rewards are in this position right here. They're just sitting there until you put them in a speed show or in your cubbies to be rotated into your system, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. So all of that storage in the baggies, in the colors, it works really, really well. Now, do you guys have any questions? Because I'm gonna switch and tell you just for five minutes or 10 minutes about the other way to do it. If you have an online store, your storage system needs to be completely different, completely different. I I know what time it is. I have 15 minutes, right? Uh, sure. Yes, I do. Okay, I told him I would be done at 6.30. <clears throat> so let me explain how this is done. I'll watch for questions, but I'm gonna explain how I track my inventory with comments sold and having Shopify. This, this applies to anyone who has an e-commerce website because you have to be able to find that jewelry that people buy, okay? So I'm gonna put e-commerce on here and I'm gonna put track your inventory. This is the only time on earth I would recommend tracking your inventory. It is not necessary to track your paparazzi inventory unless you have a website. Where you're selling it okay even if you sell in person i've had people say i go to a fair and then i take pictures of everything they buy and then i go to my google sheet and i delete it all i'm like why why would you do that i mean even if somebody stole a ring you would never know it and your inventory would be off so there's no reason or necessity to track inventory if you don't have an e-commerce store okay 
Um, all right, so e-commerce, tracking inventory. There are two ways to do this. I'm going to tell you one way that most people do, and then I'll tell you my way that I love more. So when you have a an online store, you have to have a way to find everything. So technically, and I have a few um, team members who do this, you could do the color storage system. That system will work, but you will outgrow it. And that's why I recommend my system. Um, even the other system other people do, you will outgrow it. So, and I promise you, I guys, I have so much jewelry that I know for a fact that my system works well with a lot of inventory. So if you're, if you're starting small, I would say like around, if you're selling, you know, two to 300 pieces per week, you could probably get away with sorting by color. So if you sell an orange bracelet, then you can go find it in your orange bracelets. Okay. So that actually isn't that big of a deal. Just make sure that you, that you, um, do not sell it on live video. If you're going to sell something on live video, it cannot be on your online store. So my recommendation is let's pretend you have an online store. You can follow all of this. And then right here is your online store, step four. So on step one, two, and three, no one on your online store knows that jewelry exists until you put it here. And then if you grab things from your cubbies, from, from your cubbies that you've put back in your online store, you have to actually take it out of your system with the quick scan that I taught you guys the other day take it out of your system before you show it on live video, before you put it in albums. It's totally doable. If you're going to show a hundred things in albums, just scan a hundred things out. Boom, 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 boom. You can scan them out of Shopify. So that is if you do it by color. Now, let me tell you the two systems that most people use. Um, the one system is called a SKU system. This is called a stock keeping system unit stock keeping unit okay so let me give you the perfect example there's a friend in elite who and i don't know if they still do this but they set it up about a year ago and they went to dollar tree online and they bought 1000 boxes that stack 1000 plastic boxes so it cost them a thousand dollars and they stacked them all up and they labeled them zero they might have only bought eight nine hundred because you have to have a three-digit number so number 100 through 999, okay? And they were named 100 through one through 999, and they were assigned to whatever they assigned it to. So, for example, now this is one way to do it, but this is not what I would recommend, but it does, it works to a point. So if I got this necklace and the name of it in my e-commerce, I would say, okay, this is assigned SKU 101, and then I would put them all in that box. So then when somebody orders on my website, I can go back and I grab the order and the SKU pops up and I can be like, oh, it's in box 101 and I go grab it, okay? So the SKU system is pre-assigned, or not pre-assigned, but it's assigned by you. Um, so I'm going to use the example as one, uh, 101 through 999 as an example. Some other people will do like necklace 99, like N101, N102. You guys have seen that before. So N101, N102 or bracelets, B101, B102, and so on. This system works. However, it takes extra time. So I have to go in and tell my e-commerce that this necklace is called N101. Otherwise, I can never find it. I have to literally go in and assign it. And in my opinion, it's extra work. I don't want to do extra work. So this is why I am like adamant about my system because you can use what already exists, okay? So here's the other system. The other system is to use the paparazzi barcode as the skew, so I'm going to put equals the skew, and I'll explain this to you. Um, and it goes from number 001 to about 540. 
and it, it's growing, but this is a growing system, so I'll explain that. So the barcode is are these numbers, number one to 540, and the SKU is the stock keeping unit. The SKU is where it's located, but I can just use the paparazzi barcode to find it. I don't have to assign my own numbers. So, oh, and the other problem with this is you can only have 999 things listed. Let me tell you guys, my website has 10,500 different pieces of jewelry. I have more than that because I have multiples, but I have 10,500 different listings available in my Shopify at hotseatotsy.com right now. So I would be limiting myself to only selling a thousand things, a thousand options to my customers. Now I have 10,500 options for my customers because I use this system right here. So I'll explain that to you. Um, so what's the number system with the baggies? You have to tell me that. The number system with the baggies might be similar to this idea because are you talking about assigning your own number? Is that what you're talking about? Tell me if that's what you mean, but I'll show you what I mean. So with system number two, which is the one that I'm kind of teaching you guys, is every single piece of jewelry comes with a barcode. And there's three numbers here, almost at the end. Even if it has other letters than XX, you can still use this. So this 253 is going to go in box 253 until the end of time. It's going to go in box 253 forever. So when I get jewelry, I literally just scan it into the computer and then I put it away according to the box. And I'm going to show you guys my warehouse room um, before we go, but I have to I have to wrap it up in a second. So does that make sense? If you assign the SKU as the barcode, this is how it actually uploads. Hi, Michelle. It uploads to paparazzi. I'm sorry, the paparazzi CSV uploads to your e-commerce this way. Okay, if you do this system, which it sounds like this would be the right system because that's the only one we would maybe make up, but this system totally tried and true, totally works. Um, this is what happens in your computer anyway, so you don't have to make any changes. You don't have to do anything special except put your jewelry away, okay? So let's take a little field trip and I'll show you guys this system and then I'm done. So if you have any questions, think of them right now and ask them. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera. Hold on. Where's my camera? Okay. I don't know how messy my house is. So we're gonna walk down to our warehouse room and I'll show you. And I have to walk kind of slow because I hurt my foot the other day. And I have to hold the railing. <laughs> okay, let's go over to this room and I will show you exactly what I'm teaching you with the barcode as the skew. Now, I have more jewelry than anyone wants and so Yours will not even have to be this big, but I'll just show you how I do it. Um, see these numbers? These are exactly what I was telling you about. These numbers are the barcodes. So let's say somebody orders something. I don't have anything memorized. Let me just look here. Okay, let's say somebody ordered this copper bracelet, number 46, and it says that I need to grab it because it's in their order. So I would literally go here to number 46 and I would look inside. Now this looks like a lot, but it's easy to spot colors for the most part and styles. So look, as I can see, there it is. It's not that bad to find stuff. Every once in a while, it's kind of hard. Um, we did decide to start organizing a little differently. So I'll show you what that looks like. We have put a couple of these together. Um, my assistant has been helping me. Okay, this one is done. So I think it's done. Anyway, what we've done here with this one is all the necklaces are kind of together. 
And then all the earrings are kind of in the front and all of the rings are kind of back up here in the front. So it's a little easier to find stuff. I probably have a better one. Let me see. We've only organized a couple, so here's one. Okay, so if we had 153 and we had to find something in here, this idea was Colleen. Colleen Menning is on um, YouTube as well, if you guys want to watch her, she's on my team. But Colleen's idea was to use the rubber bands. I was using page covers because that was my old system, but rubber bands give you a little more space. So this is all the same necklace, these little bundles. And then back here, we just, it's just really easy. You like thumb through it like a library catalog. Here's all of the same one, there's a hair clip. It's pretty easy to find stuff. We've got bracelets here. So when I need to find something, I can just go through and thumb through and find it. And we're pretty fast. Um, when we package orders, we can usually package with two people in, let's see, 10, 11, 12, 1, 6. Okay, I would say in 10 hours of work, we can package 80 orders. So I don't know if that means anything to anybody. That's 10 hours of one person because we work together, so it only takes five hours. But in about 10 hours of work, we can package 80 orders. So that might give you something to reference. And then what I have over here is, this is spillover because I have too much jewelry, but um, this is for like bulky stuff or new stuff. So these were new pretty recently and there's a lot of them. And so maybe I sell them um, a lot like at the beginning and then they get diminished into a small amount. So maybe there's only two left. And then these go in the box. And that way the box isn't full of these multiples. So when brand, brand new stuff comes, we put it here. We call this the wall. And what happens is like, like, let me, where's an example? Because this just happened. Um, I'll show you one over here because it's kind of cool. This. Oh, I know there's one right here. So we had this and a ton of people bought them. And so we didn't have to dig through anything. We're like, okay, here's our giant bag of those. We know we're going to sell a ton of those. And that's what this wall is for. And I just worked with the space I had, but it, the idea is that you have shelves and stuff and you can go through each box. Some of my team members, <laughs> these are not pushed in very nicely, but it, it still functions. Some of my team num members have combined numbers and I have done that in a few cases. So up here, we have two at a time. So these two are in a box. We've done it by twos. And then up here, we've done it by fives. So if you're new and you don't have as much stuff as me, you can do it all by fives if you want. You can just see what works for you. Um, but this way, all this jewelry is together where it belongs and you can find it. And what I was going to say is cool about the um, barcode numbers is that... In any given number, there's only like three or four orange necklaces possible and three or four gold bracelets possible. So when you go to a box and grab something, the chance of you messing up is very, very small. Really, really small. If I was going to go to an orange box of jewelry and grab an orange necklace, I could totally mess up because they're all orange. Like it's so much easier to mess up. So this system is a really better um, fail safe system as far as keeping things together and not having an individual number for each item. Doing the individual SKU idea, which was idea number one, it's a good idea, it's just not growable. <laughs> so this idea though, we've been growing with it. I've done it for a year and we've added on to it as the numbers get bigger. And so down here we have like the 480s, the 490s, the five. The 500s is really full, so I'm probably going to split that into four 500 and then 510 and up. And then we usually keep the life of the party out until most of it sells. Same with Fashion Fix. We keep it out until most of it sells, then we put it all away. And then this is some unlabeled jewelry that I've numbered manually. So that is the system. Do you guys have any questions? Hi, Deborah. Um... Deanna, you can message me on YouTube. Um, the other thing you can do is 
email me. My email is lisa.abercrombie at gmail.com. Sorry, I'm going to hold this up higher. Lisa.abercrombie, spelled just like this, lisa.abercrombie at gmail.com, and then I can message you there. Um, I also have a text alert where every time I do something, like if I go live, I send out a text alert and tell everybody. Or if I do an album, I send a text alert and tell everybody because everybody on my text alerts wants to know about the jewelry. Okay? And, and if they don't, they get off the text alerts. But it's an awesome way to communicate with your customers. In fact, I did that tonight because Facebook Live wouldn't let me go live. My phone was messing up and I was able to tell everybody where we were. So it's pretty cool to be able to do that. Okay, do you guys have any questions? I can smell the hamburgers my husband is making. I promised him I would be done at 6.30. So I'll just watch for questions. Any questions about any of this? So my best advice to you is that you only need to, you, you should organize your jewelry based on how you're selling it. And that's what I taught the whole big portion of this video. Store your jewelry based on how you're selling it. You can literally fit everything in boxes. I did it for so long. And then if you get e-commerce, I highly recommend you store with the barcode. It's a really, really good system that saves you time. Okay. Okay. I guess we're done. Um, okay. Sounds good, Amelia. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, you guys. If you have questions, you can send me a message here or on Facebook. Or you can email me like, um, like Deanna asked. And if you guys have any more video suggestions, I'm going live for 90 days. So I need lots of ideas for teaching. I've got some, but, um, and I'll be teaching a printing video. I have a label printer that was $80 and that's all I use and labels are cheaper and it's a pretty good system too. And just today I figured out how to print from my iPad without a Wi-Fi printer. So that was kind of a big discovery. I'll be teaching that too. Um, and <laughs> Saturday, probably, I will be going live in the Training with Rockstars group, teaching how to sell a black diamond level, only working 20 hours per week. So I'm going to teach that too. Okay. All right. Oh, good. You're using the filing system. I'm so glad that my team members who switched to it love it. They totally love it. All right. Have a good night, everybody. You're welcome. I hope it helped you. I'm glad you guys found me over here on YouTube. And I will see you all later, okay? All right. Bye.